drum roll, please. Um, Pick up the RV. So nervous. <laughs> but excited. But excited. Yeah. But excited. More excited than nervous. More excited than... This is our first time. Well, Adam's going to mostly be doing it, towing anything. And we bought this giant 44-foot fifth wheel. Almost 45. Yeah. It's pretty big. We've done our research on towing especially towing fifth wheels. You can do all the research you want. Yeah. You're not going to know until you do it and practice it. Until you experience it and do it yourself. You know, people can give you as much advice and as many tips as possible, which is definitely helpful. Yeah, take into consideration. If you guys haven't or don't watch Mark and Trish, keep your daydream. You need to go over to their channel and watch them because they have some really great tips and they are a big reason why we decided to purchase an RV and go full time and make this our lifestyle. We've been wanting to do this. This has been a life dream of ours and this is, we figured this was the best situation for our family with how we want to live where we want. We don't know where we want to live so yeah. uh, you know, why not? do what we're doing and Mark and Trish have helped us so much by watching their videos it's solidified that this is definitely what we want to do and we feel like we we can do this and we want to do this go check them out if you haven't if you're thinking about doing this lifestyle RV lifestyle they're one there's a lot among others too that, that we watch yeah but they're, they're um, a big reason mm -hmm. My palms have been sweating this whole time. Oh, somebody's nervous. He's you nervous about towing, which I, I can totally understand. I mean, I think we're all a little bit nervous because it's new. We've never done anything like this before. It's all new territory. On one side, we kind of know what to expect. On the other side, we don't, if that makes sense. The best way to learn it is do it, so. Yeah. It's gonna be an exciting adventure and I think after today we'll have a better grasp on things we need to do and things we shouldn't do when it comes to towing because today we're just picking up the RV and we're going to park it at a family member's house until we leave in five weeks it's exactly five weeks until we leave it's getting close. I know I'm so excited <laughs> I can't wait and Kyla's I think just excited as excited as I am I have a lot of emotions going through me right now. Oh boy. So we're here at General RV, and our RV is here, and we're just waiting for, uh, I don't know what his title is, but uh, the person that's gonna come do our demo hookup, because um, we have no idea what we're doing. We can watch all the videos we want. We have the gist of what we need to do, but we just wanna be sure that we're absolutely doing what we need to do and know what we need to do. So we're gonna have a guy helping us out get this hitched up so I can freak out on the road. It's getting closer. My hands are still sweating. <laughs> We're just about ready to back that thing up on it, you know what I'm saying? to me and then again I don't know because I don't want to hit these so I don't know we'll see what he says yeah when he comes should to I us. back it up a little closer just to get a better look at how high each thing is Yeah. 
Yeah, if you look on this thing, it says off and on. They were still on, so it's been sitting something probably drained the battery on this dead, dead, like, super dead. I think it's got nothing in it. Grab a jump pack or have somebody bring one out. So this light right here, see going red, green, red, green? Yeah. Red is like an air. The battery has like 0.6 volts. 12.6 volts is considered a fully charged battery. 12.4 is considered a half dead battery. 12.0 is considered a dead battery. This has 0.4. It's a dead spud. The side to side really doesn't matter that much. Yeah, it's the way it goes forward and back. It's yeah. It's weird. So I think this would have done this either way. Okay. So you can see right here, what you're looking for is six inches of clearance. So we need to raise the hitch. Does the hitch go? If you could raise the hitch one more, the hitch will actually probably. Yeah, we just need to. We just need to. Yeah, yeah it, does it, it, it I mean, does it have one more slot of adjustment? Yeah, one more. Mm -hmm. That might actually be enough. So even though we don't have that clearance right now, it'll be okay driving. No, no, no. If no, you no we're gonna hit. Crash. Really? Okay. Wow. more you can go right now and it still has a lot yeah, of play in it. Yeah, it looks like it's as tight as it can be. Most hitches don't have this much play in their in their movement. You hear about that, they want bushings and stuff in them so that they move but they always come back to center. Yeah. They're supposed to have movement, they're just not supposed to be sloppy. Like yeah, that. like not, not supposed to it's just gonna be a bad ride. I mean, there's not anything like wrong with this hitch. Yeah. It's just not gonna be the best ride you can Kind of support this yeah, bolt, that's it's gonna drop. Or once I pull this bolt out. Right. You can let it down now for a second. It's, it, it'll max out on this not gonna crash down. We just gotta get up. If you can hold this side up, we'll have to put one in over here, we'll just kinda walk it up together. It's gotta be a line. Good? If I yeah, dropped it, it was gonna pinch my hand. Oh yeah, yeah. These things are real annoying like that. I get you need to punch at least one or two times a day. Yeah, we got a lot of height out of that. Maybe. Might not have been enough, but to start. If you were to come in like this, this yeah, would have been inside of it. So you gotta be real careful with how you. Yeah, straight. I just closed the T. Jumped on me. Yeah. Oh, nice. well, see, with this one, we figured out that you have to pull it forward. Oh, and okay. That's where it locks. Yeah, as long as you can get your lock on it. Uh, Are we supposed to put a pin in there to keep it closed? Like you see in between those two holes yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, lock or something. Um, I might have something in the car for you. Actually, you got lucky. It opened up. Sweet. Nice. So you can touch and you can be a little bit down, but if you're like I was at first, yeah, like, like, that's a no-go. So now what we do is call the tug test. We put the weight down on it, basically we're going to pick the legs up. Um, about an inch is what you're looking for on these legs yeah. down here. Do this in a sequence every single time. And you're going to so like, I'll tell people, back on obviously, handle, safety breakaway and pin. I'll show you to pin your safety yeah. breakaway right here. Seven way and then bed is your last step. Same thing when you go to hook up, you obviously have to put the bed down first. Yeah. Or disconnect, I mean. Put the bed down, disconnect your seven way, disconnect your pin and safety breakaway, and then pull the handle. Do it in that same order every time, it'll be like second nature. Leave your tailgate down until after you do what I'm about to do. Okay. This is called a tug test. He's doing a tug test. Don't ever skip that step. If there's 
You can forget whatever you want. The worst thing that would have just happened was the trailer would have fell a quarter of an inch off. Normally you won't have them down this far. I normally tell people half of so we'll call this up here the lifting leg, the leg that goes up and down, because that's yeah. what's doing the lifting. And this is just the support. I'll say to put the support about half the length up the lifting. Uh, okay. Because you don't want to be in a situation where you have this thing up here and you just run these legs all the way down and you sat for a day or two at a campsite and they sank down in the sand and now you can't get high enough to get truck under it. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. It's a really odd scenario to get out of. But now we can put these up. Now that we know we're mechanically connected, we're not going anywhere, you can put up your tailgate because nothing's going to go through it. All right. okay. So the point of that tug test is to save you. That's why we leave this down, because if it did come off, that pin yeah, box is right crunching our tailgate. So have you guys had like, RVs before and stuff? Yeah. No, this is our first RV. Have first. you ever had a trailer with trailer brakes or anything? No. Yeah. Awesome. We're well, going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. No, I'm not even kidding. Honestly, people come in and they get fifth wheels first. They're like, I'm crazy for doing this, right? And it's like, really, honestly, this is a much stronger connection than a bumper pull. You know, semi trucks use fifth wheels, not bumper pull. I mean, yeah. you're doing less strain on your truck like this. I, it's just literally better. Oh, yeah. It's a better experience. The thing I was talking about, that safety breakaway on that box, if for some reason this thing came off, it would pull, that safety breakaway would rip out of that little black box, and your brakes would be applied fully on the trailer. Whenever you get in for the first time after a while, just run your brakes up to 10 and test them, make sure you know they're working. Okay. You don't want to be driving down the road and like not. All of a sudden, you don't brakes. brakes. Yeah, <laughs> this thing will push you around. You don't ever want to feel that tug, because what's happening is the trailer's trying to stop the truck, and it can't pull you backwards, so what it does is it pushes down. Okay. When you swap the back of the truck, it lifts the front. When you lift the front, it changes the alignment, and you get washy steering, sorry, tire wear, accelerated brake wear, less brake power, a whole bunch of stuff you don't want when you're pulling from the yeah. So you want to get those brakes nice and smooth. And um, you saw how I squeezed that thing. Yeah, so Imagine that squeeze is basically like a foot pedal, it's just foot trailer. That's the same thing as your brake pedal, but it's just the trailer, it's not the truck. Okay. So you jam that thing, you just stomp on your brakes. Yeah, gotcha. so my qu I was asking her, my question was with the, the trailer braking, do I have to hit that every time I want to go to a stop? So when I just hit the truck brake, it'll automatically use these brakes? You said, remember I said run the gain up to 10? Yeah. What that gain is, is how much brakes the trailer is allowed to use. So the easiest way to explain it is, right now it's one to one. You give your truck 100% brakes, the trailer's giving it 100% brakes. You give the truck 50%, it's getting 50%. You set this thing, you set the gain to 5.0, you give the truck 100% brakes, the trailer's getting 50%. You give the truck 50%, it's getting 25%. A lot of people are like, wow, I just give it all the brakes. I want all my brakes, right? The thing is, if you have those brakes run up to 10 and you're driving around like normal, um, you might honestly lock up those tires every time you touch your brake pedals. But worse, if you don't do that, you don't know it's set wrong, you're driving down the road, a rainstorm comes, you just tap on your brakes and have that trailer is skating by. To do a calibration on it, it's very simple. Like I said, that thing is basically a foot pedal, so you don't want to be rough or whatever, you want to be nice and smooth. Um, the easiest place to explain it around here is like where that truck's coming from that straightaway on the way to the next building. Get up to like 20, 25 miles per hour and just ease on the brake controller and like ease on it and like you'll feel like you're sitting in your seat, you'll feel this. Yeah. Because that's that trailer pushing down on the bed. So let's say you were at, I'm gonna put you a 6.0 gain to start. Say you're at 6.0, you press the minus, now you're at 5.5. Do it again, you feel that bump, press the minus, now you're at 5.0. What you'll eventually feel is smooth. a nice smooth, almost like the, it's a weird sensation, almost like the truck is just slowing down really fast for no reason. That means that they're both working together. The trailer's not trying to pull the truck. What'll happen too is if you unsettle the truck in the trailer, if you do that at like 60 and you hit a bump on the interstate at the same time, it can make the trailer want to start swaying and all kinds of stuff you don't want to deal with. Yeah. If you do ever have to deal this way, take that brake controller. Like a hydroplane, you know, you don't change the truck, you just drive. Yeah. Keep the truck the same, don't do any, don't study movements, no brakes, no gas, just keep it the same as it was and just ease on your trailer brakes. And they'll pull drag on the trailer and walk it back in the line. Um, same thing, you get a blowout on a tire, just get on your trailer brakes and pull over to the side of the road. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You press your brake pedal, the trailer's gonna press its brakes too. You don't have to worry okay. about the speeds. Okay. okay. Also, what we're looking for too, so you know for future reference and stuff, um, if you're gonna make changes to the truck or whatever, see how the trailer is nice and flat. Yeah. If you have the trailer like this or like this, it's gonna, if it's nose down, it's gonna wanna search behind you, you'll feel it shimmy in the back of the truck. Yeah. It's too high, the wind will catch you, it'll feel like a billboard. So you want that trailer nice and flat for your yeah. air fan. I mean, it's a billboard either way, but you yeah. want as much yeah. airflow as you can possibly. One other thing, when you guys hit that auto level button, which mm -hmm. I do, I encourage, I encourage you to use that, it's a great feature. Yeah. The trailer has no way of knowing your truck is there. So if you press auto level, walk away, and it needs to go down, it's going right through the trailer. Yeah. So pull the truck out the way. Here we go. Mm. Let okay. my foot, I'll, oh, this person's walking next to me. Have you planned how you're going to turn out of here? No, we need to figure out the route. But I'm saying like right, just right here, these curves. Oh, I was gonna come a little wide, or 
Yeah, I think you should come a little wide and come go in. Come a little in, wide, come in. And, and then, then go then. that way, yeah. Just to get used to the feel of it at least. Yeah. And then I'll set up our GPS to get us home for RV safe. All right, all right, we're in drive. I'm letting my foot <laughs> off the brake. Oh gosh. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I'm confident. How's it feel? Can you tell you're towing something? Yeah, because it, it doesn't accelerate as... Oh my as god, this is so crazy. What? I'm sorry, I'm just so excited. Yeah. Wow, babe, see? You're doing good, Adam. You really are. He's focused. He's like, stop talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I need to so get it up to 25. Oh. Coast it. And then do the brakes? Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel that. I think it was good. He said it would jerk and do it until it's it smooth. It did not. That was pretty it smooth, in my opinion. Why is it working? Is your battery still dead? No, oh because God. it wouldn't have turned on. Is it not on? I feel like it should work though. Right now we're trying to let the battery to the RV charge for a little bit so that way we can put the front levelers down and unhitch and everything. But our battery is completely dead, which we're surprised because we thought that it would charge up while we were driving. We just drove for, what, a good two hours? So we thought it'd be charged up, but this little button, that little button is still red, so. When we went to go visit it, the person who hooked us up to power so we could put the slides out and stuff like that forgot to shut off our connection to the battery. I mean, so, we're honestly kind of at fault too. So we didn't check that. But yeah, we I didn't, know. we also didn't know. <sighs> fun times. Fun These are times. the kind of kinks we expected to run into though, so. And of course we forgot the film footage of me backing it into the friend's house. Yeah, but we were too focused on just backing it in there safely and yeah. making sure that everything went pretty smoothly or okay at least. It's pretty hard to, maybe I need to go down a little bit more. And this is not pulling out. Alright, so your black handle, what does that do? Is that The black handle is just pretty much for the, the slide. Like say when we were backing it in, I needed more maneuverability. You can I pull it. I pull left. it out of there, and it slides. It's pull oh. it forward a little bit. It slides oh, okay. this back, and I have a little bit more room yeah, to turn. Can. So maybe we need Probably a little more weight in. off the. Yeah, you might pitch. have too much weight on it. So okay. let's do these two that we want to do, and then we can get another one of these. Let's get the hard ones out of the way right now. You all right? A little scared. You're a little scared. I don't like heights. All right. <laughs> Well, what are you going to do when you have to wash this roof? Up, yeah, it's straight <laughs> up You know what? I'll get a ladder to work. You know what? You could just wash the roof. That works. Yeah, yeah. Well, just I, I'll it. drive it all the time. Yeah, I'll good. wash it all the time. It's another thing that you got to do. Uh, let's make sure we turn the battery off. I'm really uh, proud of this. Twice that's happened and we've resulted in getting a new battery. <laughs> 